Hello and welcome to Atop the Fourth Wall, where bad comics burn. <sighs> well, folks, we've reached a new low. An epic fail that I doubt even Sean Faust could report on adequately. I am referring, of course, to the six-part event comic, Amazon's Attack. Hera, help us. I'm going to be breaking one of my own rules here. The thing is, one of the big problems with this comic is continuity. It disregards the vast majority of continuity built up around the Amazons and their culture, and as a result of... Shut up, 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 So anyway, because continuity plays such a big part in this, I decided that before we get to the comic itself, I need to talk about Wonder Woman, the Amazons, and the events leading up to Amazon's attack. She's the most recognizable superheroine throughout the world, Wonder Woman. Now, in popular culture, when people think Wonder Woman, they think this. But that was a 70s TV show that didn't exactly reflect the nuances of the character. Then again, Wonder Woman's character is something a lot of writers and popular culture don't seem to quite know about. Sure, Superman and Batman, you think of them and the mythology around them, and you've got it down. Superman! You will believe that a man can fly! Batman! I'm Batman. And I can breathe in space. Wonder Woman! Uh... Oh! Tie me up with your lasso! Ugh. Yeah, popular consciousness is not kind to Wonder Woman, though it's easy to see how the ideas about her came about. In the 1940s, a psychologist named William Moulton Marston created Wonder Woman. And yes, I'm fully aware of his lifestyle choices. He was in a polyamorous relationship with two women, so you don't have to inform me about them. In any case, he did note one problem at the time. Girls lacked a strong role model they could latch onto. And I don't mean, let's all be good little homemakers and good little wives role models. I mean women who punched Nazis and kicked people's asses if they were jerks. And so he created Wonder Woman. However, he also knew that he needed to get boys on board for the character to survive. So he hit upon the age-old excuse of sex cells and put out covers featuring Wonder Woman in bondage. And I mean a lot of covers of her in bondage. You know, for kids! And while there was still lots of bondage in the books themselves, Marsden had this philosophical idea of loving submission that I don't really quite understand, so I'm not going to try to talk about it, what they'd also get was a philosophy lesson about not treating women as inferiors. So, what about this character? Well, it does us no good to look at the Golden Age origins, since there have been some changes to that in the last few decades. So let's skip ahead to 1986. Following DC's miniseries, Crisis on Infinite Earths, the DC Universe had the chance to give some of their characters a fresh start with no continuity, and they did so with Wonder Woman. Drawing once more upon Greek mythology like Marsden had done, it was shown that a group of Greek goddesses realized that someday people were going to stop worshipping them, so they should create a new race of humans who could always spread their ideals and beliefs. They decided to take the souls of women who died tragically, particularly at the hands of ignorant or hateful men, and gave them new life, thus creating the Amazons, meant to be better than the rest of humanity, who are selfish dicks. Better culture. Yeah, I'm already endearing myself to the better culture already, I can see that. Jokes aside, and long story short, too late, the Amazons make a serious mistake, and, as punishment, Athena, goddess of wisdom, sends them to the island of Themyscira to live forever and guard an unspeakable evil. What evil is this? It's... Unspeakable! Yeah, I have no clue. I really should actually read the stories. As symbols of their former lives, they're also given VAM braces to wear. You know, the, the bracelets. So everything's all hunky-dory for them for a while, but then Hippolyta, the queen of the Amazons, decides that she wants a daughter. As such, she fashions a baby girl out of clay and prays to the gods to grant her life. Thus, Diana, a.k.a. the future Wonder Woman, is born. There you have it, folks. No metal plates in their heads, no lame football uniforms and once-in-a-lifetime mixtures of chemicals, or magic coins with no backstory. Wonder Woman was made by the freaking gods! In fact, the gods impart gifts to the baby girl, based on their own abilities. Demeter gives her the strength of the Earth itself. 
Hermes imbues speed and flight. Aphrodite grants beauty and a loving heart. Athena bestows wisdom. Artemis, the eye of a hunter, and unity with animals. Yeah, there's your freaking heart right there, Captain Planet. Hestia gives her sisterhood with fire that it may open men's hearts to her. Oh, so the way to a man's heart is with fire. Wait, what? Well, okay, it's an overly dramatic way of saying it, but this is really the precursor to Wonder Woman's real iconography. Batman is justice, Superman is hope, but Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman is the spirit of truth! More on that later. So there you have it, folks. Wisdom, strategy, strength, flight, and the inability to use credit cards or pump gas. Urgh. We'll get to that in a minute. So, Diana grows up on the island, but then the Oracle prophesizes the likely possibility of Ares, god of war, using his power to consume the world in endless conflict. So the gods bestow a mission upon the Amazons, to send their best champion to Man's World, to spread a message of peace and combat evil where it may hide. Once again, long story short, Diana becomes the one to go out into the modern world. The gods grant her another gift, an indestructible lasso that channels truth itself. This could mean revealing a person's true nature, and freeing people from mind control, to letting them see their own soul, or even the truth of a mad plan they wish to enact upon the world. At one point, Wonder Woman even died, but was reborn as the goddess of truth. And there you have it, folks! Your core concept of the character boiled down to a single statement. Wonder Woman is the spirit of truth! WHY DO SO MANY WRITERS NOT GET THIS?! So, yeah, for the next several years, lots of stuff happens. Wonder Woman holds down several jobs, including working at a taco joint. Seriously, she works at a taco joint for a while. She goes into space and topples a galactic empire. But most interesting of all is when Themyscira rejoins the rest of the world. <gasps> a society of warrior women who don't need men while promoting feminism and peace? Hide the playboys and man the guns, quick! Yeah, yeah, I joke about this, but seriously, diplomatic relations open up between Themyscira and the rest of the world. Diplomats, philosophers, writing, art, and etc. are all exchanged, discussed, and a fun time is had by all. And who better to serve as an ambassador to the United States than Wonder Woman herself? Hell, Themyscira even drops the monarchy! They upgrade themselves technologically so they have a mixture of magic, modern science, and just innovative thinking from a culture that's existed for thousands of years unimpeded. And during this, Diana even writes a book on philosophy and it becomes a bestseller. She's been in the world for ten years, she's loved by the world, and she loves the world right back. So, in grand comic book tradition, let's find out how we can screw it all up! Enter Jeff Johns. Now, an admission here. I love Jeff Johns' work. He was fantastic with the Justice Society, he has original ideas and concepts that I would never have even begun to dream of, and he got me interested in comics outside of the Titans. But the man cannot write Wonder Woman to save his life! I don't get what his problem is with her, but he really doesn't understand the character. Every time he writes her, she's espousing nonsense and promotes this idea that Wonder Woman is some perfect individual who thinks she's perfect and needs to get brought down to us ordinary folks. And it's bullcrap! Diana never claimed to be better than anyone. She was kind, good-hearted, and she did everything in her power to try to make other people's lives better. <sighs> so anyway, the story in question. In 2005, Jeff Johns wrote a sequel series to Crisis on Infinite Earths, called Infinite Crisis. In the build-up to it, Superman became ineffectual, although I blame that more on Chuck Austin writing it more than anything, though. Batman became a paranoid lunatic who set up a satellite array to monitor the superheroes of the world. And in order to save Superman's life, Wonder Woman murdered a hero-turned-villain named Maxwell Lord. That image of her killing him was transmitted to the world, and suddenly everyone was afraid of Wonder Woman and the Amazons. You know how in Marvel, people will turn on their heroes at the drop of a hat? Well, that's what happened here with Diana. To once again make a long story short, the Amazons had to flee from the world, and Wonder Woman would never be able to be with them again! She went on some bullcrap find-yourself mission, and came out of it deciding to adopt a secret identity. And how did she decide to become a closer part of the world? What profession would she hold that would make her closer to the poor, ordinary human beings that apparently she didn't connect with? A secret agent in a tight white jumpsuit! Of course, it makes perfect sense! 
So, yeah, DC started off the book and it made some waves. However, to make matters worse, they made the writer of the book, Alan Heinberg, who's a good writer, but it takes him forever to write anything. And so the opening storyline for the book, a mere five issues, took over a year to finally be completed. And even then, the storyline wasn't completed in the main book. So out with Heinberg and in with famed author Jody Pickelt. She really didn't get Wonder Woman writing her as someone who had just stepped off the boat to America. Wonder Woman couldn't pump gas, didn't know how to use a credit card, and basically was a complete moron. She wrote a freaking book! She was an ambassador for crying out loud! So here we are. The Amazons are gone, Wonder Woman has been set up as a complete dingbat in her own book, and DC wants to have another summer crossover event book with tie-ins, despite the fact that Infinite Crisis was barely over a year old. And thus, Amazon's attack was born. The one good thing that has come out of this malarkey is that Gail Simone is now writing Wonder Woman. I highly recommend this book as it is now. People want me to recommend a good book? This one. Hunt down any book written by Gail Simone, in particular her Wonder Woman stuff. Her first storyline is collected and called Wonder Woman The Circle. Get it now! It has Gorilla Knights in it, and Wonder Woman fighting Nazis! Seeing as March is Women's History Month in the United States, I hope this history lesson into the greatest superheroine ever has been helpful, and that the review of the comic itself meets your expectations. And since I'm taking on a whole mini-series of mini-intelligence, I have no choice but to train myself in preparation! Time for a training montage, people! This comic sucks! This comic sucks! This comic sucks! This comic sucks! All these comics suck! Okay, clearly, my unique physique as a comic book nerd does not uh, lend itself well to Rocky Balboa training montages. But the good thing about being a geek, though, you get creative. Let's go. Take two. Ready for you. Come on, give me your best shot. What can you do, huh? I got all.